Shalom and greetings from Jerusalem, Jane. I gotta be honest with you today and say my heart is in two countries today. I was born and raised in Denmark and then I came here to Israel 10 years ago. Three months before I was born, Denmark got a queen, Queen Margrethe. She has been the queen of Denmark ever since until today. She's abdicating. She's giving her throne to her son, the firstborn crown prince, Frederick. So a huge thank you to Queen Margrethe for doing such an extraordinary job for nearly 52 years in Denmark. I salute you with all that I have. May God bless you for the remaining years of your life. May God bless the new King of Denmark, King Frederick and his wife Mary from Australia. He went to the Olympics in Sydney and he met this commoner, this beautiful young lady. She came to Denmark. It's a beautiful love story. They fell in love. They got married. They have four children. So this commoner, young girl from Australia is now becoming the Queen of Denmark. Congratulations, Denmark. I celebrate with you. You know, there's a part of me that wish I could be in Denmark and stand in front of the castle this afternoon when the Danish Prime Minister is proclaiming and announcing and introducing the new King of Denmark. Well, of course, the situation is completely different here in Israel. It has now been 100 days since that brutal assault on Israel, October 7, where 1,200 people were murdered, burned alive, executed, uh, decapitated, mass gang raped, sexually abused, uh, the atrocities. You know, we will never know the full scope of the atrocities. 5,000 people were injured. Hundreds of soldiers, police officers were murdered. People were dragged inside the Gaza Strip. Uh, more than 200 hostages. Not once did the Red Cross uh, get permission to get in and visit these hostages. Uh, we know some of them were released and they have given horrendous testimonies of what they had to go through, what they had to endure. Uh, telling about what they saw some of the hostages who is still in there uh, went through. So my heart, my prayers are with all of the people still held hostage inside Gaza, including baby Kefir, who is turning one years old in the dungeons, in the, uh, the tunnels inside Gaza with his mother, his father and his four year older brother. Today, Israel negotiated a deal, uh, so according to reports, medicine should be going in from Israel to the hostages today. So as they are celebrating in Denmark, we are still mourning here in Israel. Uh, there are still forensic, forensic technicians who is trying to identify bodies. And there are people who will never be identified because their remainings are just gone. You know, people were burnt to ashes. So it's just devastating. Thousands and thousands of people are still uh, displaced, sitting in hotels throughout all of Israel. They lost all of their belongings. The clothes they put on every day are donations. They are staying in a hotel room for a hundred days now. Um, the economy here in Israel is hit by you. You are not here. The tourists are not here. The bus companies, the tour operators, the hotels, um, the tour guides, is all out of a job because Israel, you know, there are no tourists coming here. So, you know, in some ways, it's like we, we, are, we are just still stuck on October 7, here 100 days later. So I really, really, really want to encourage you to continue to pray for Israel. We see that this whole country is coming together. They are united as one. They are helping each other wherever they can. They are coming together. People are volunteer. People are leaving 
you know, their regular job to go and help, uh, you know, doctors, nurses, psychologists um, are coming to help, you know, thousands, hundreds and thousands of people, if not more, are completely traumatized from what they went through. We are all traumatized. You know, people are asking me, are you okay? No, I'm not okay. There's not one person in this country that's okay. As a matter of fact, I had several people who said, are you getting help, Jane? Are you getting help from all the trauma that you are also going through and you have to report about it? Uh, no, I'm not <laughs> for those asking, but it's very, very difficult. It's something, if you're not here and living here, you will never understand what it is like. But to see the resilience of the Jewish people, to see their strength in their love for each other, to stand united, uh, it's just remarkable. It is just remarkable. We are still having funerals. Uh, today, the Israeli military announced the death of a young soldier uh, in the beginning of his 20s who was killed defending the Jewish homelands inside Gaza against Hamas, ISIS. So many funerals. So many funerals. I want to end by a personal update because it has been tough these last three months. Emotionally, mentally, physically, you know, on all areas in your body, you are taking a toll. And then all of a sudden I had out of the blue, uh, I needed the surgery uh, in my feet for or January 1st, which I'm still recovering from. Uh, it's still wounds. It's, it's just taking time. There's nothing I can do about it. So I've kind of been sitting still for two weeks, which is not good for your back and the rest of it. So <clears throat> I just had to come to turn and just, you know, accept that I'm not in a position right now where I can physically move, where I have the strength or a body or the help or the right place to say, I'm going to find a new home. I'm going to pack. I'm going to lift. I'm going to haul. I'm going to move. I'm going to unpack for March 1st. I have to admit it is not possible for me at this time. Thankfully, my landlord was very understanding and we agreed this early this morning that I will be staying here for the next three months. So moving day now is June 1st. It gives me time to heal up from the foot surgery, to get my back a little bit more strong, uh, to get the right people into my life to help, but also to find the right place that I firmly believe God has for me uh, for moving forward. And then we'll also see what is happening uh, in Israel regarding war and everything. But when my landlord agreed this morning, I just felt this um, peace that surpasses all understanding just filling me, saying, okay, so what needs to happen now is for my health to become better and stronger before I move. So thank you for praying into this situation. I'm so touched by all of your comments, your encouragement, your love and your prayers and financial support for me uh, in this time of 100 days since these atrocities and the war and I have had to report about it while I had to go and have surgery. So I am simply just not in a place right now where I can do all of that hard work and move next month. It is not possible. People told me, please, please take care of yourself and do what's best for you. And that's what, unfortunately, is the situation. So, yeah, continue to pray for me for speedy recovery, for the surgery and everything. Uh, God bless you so much for encouraging me. Uh, it means the world to me. So again, congratulations to Denmark for the crown prince who is now becoming a king in Denmark. Uh, God bless the whole royal family for such a time as this. And may God stand with Israel and to comfort, comfort his people. That's what I am trying to do every day. And I think that a lot of people around the world is doing the same, praying for Israel, standing with Israel, going out in the streets. I know there's a big pro-Israel rally in uh, Trafalgar Square today in England. So go there if you can uh, and, you know, orchestrate pro-Israel rally around the world. It makes a difference. 
when they see here in Israel that, oh, wow, they were out in the street in Holland. They were out in the streets in South Africa. They were out in the streets in Venezuela or Norway. It matters. It makes a difference. And uh, let me tell you a secret. God sees you. You cannot stay silent for such a time as this. God sees you and what you are doing for standing with Israel for such a time as this. God bless Denmark. That's what I'm saying today with the crowning of a new king. And God bless Israel. God bless all of you amazing people around the world. United, we stand with Israel at this time. Bye.